Hello everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades, and today we're going to be talking about how to become an entrepreneur. So becoming an entrepreneur is a super critical decision. I mean, taking that leap of faith and making the decision of, hey, I'm going to say goodbye to my nine to five and really going after at building my, my dream is a really critical decision in your life. This is not a job title, it's not a role, it's literally a lifestyle. So today we're going to be covering everything that goes into it, some of the steps that you're going to have to make and how to make it successful. So with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing is to really learn what it means. I mean, at the end of the day, you need to understand and really familiarize yourself with what it's going to take to really make this thing happen. This is going to be five to seven years that you are allocating of your life to really going after this, sweat, tears, you name it. So you need to understand not only what it's going to take, but then also really know what kind of transformation the business is going to have to go through and also what kind of transformation you are going to have to go through too on a personal note because you're going to have to grow those leadership skills to grow at the same speed at which the company is growing at. So once you're clear with that, then you are going to have a little bit more visibility and for that, this point is going to be critical. The next thing is picking a business idea. I mean, business ideas are just 5% of it. 95% of the success really is for the execution, but you want to grab an idea that is big enough that is going to justify all these sacrifices that you're gonna be putting out on this, like missed out of birthdays, not being with your family as much, and in the end, you want to go for markets that are big enough so that they can provide a great opportunity for you and then also for potential investors that you may want to bring in. And those investors, typically, they are interested in markets where the opportunity is at least $1 billion or more. If you are looking at building a hyper growth business, a billion dollar business, you cannot go for markets that are under a billion dollars. Then you want to build your network. I mean, the network is your net worth. You want to build a network early on, as early as literally having an idea on a napkin. So really here, I mean, you want to build different types of networks. You want to build a network for the money with those investors. You want to build a network for potential employers. And then also you want to build a network for the distribution, like maybe like potential partners. And here's the thing, you don't want to build a network when you need it. You need to build it in advance so that whenever you need it, you already know who to call. In many instances, you see this when doing recruiting and hiring. People, when they are like uh, ready to get that role and, and, and really delegate to that person, they're like, wow, now who can I call? Who is going to help me? And then they start doing the research and at that point it's too late. You want to build that network with potential candidates that, that you're going to need later uh, down the line. And with that being said, you want to have that person ready and available for you to call them whenever you need them. And for that, you need that network built and you need to build it early, as early as possible. The next thing is you want to organize your business. You're going to need legal advice to help you with incorporating your business, to help you with structuring maybe that partnership with your partner. And here is not going to be a civil or a family lawyer or maybe your cousin Vinny that studied law in law school. Here you need corporate lawyers that can provide that guidance that you're going to need to make sure that you're doing things well from day one. What I see a lot of people making as a mistake is grabbing the, either the wrong lawyer or perhaps not structuring things the right way from day one. And ultimately, that ends up being a complete catastrophe uh, that it's going to lead to, to something really bad. So make sure that from day one, things are clean and things are organized from a legal perspective. The next thing is you want to test your idea. I mean, before you even go to market, don't think that, that oh my God, this is going to be amazing. Uh, my assumptions are fantastic because never you're going to get it right with the assumptions. The way you want to go about it is you want to go where your potential customers are going to be and ask them, 
Test them. Get this service. Get the product in front of them. Try to get some data points. Try to get some feedback. Maybe it's getting on the phone. Maybe it's doing some surveys. But get as many data points as possible because that is going to help you in polishing your product and your service further so that when you get it to market, you already know that you're bringing to market something that people want to use, something that people have been craving for, and something that people are telling you, this is going to address my problem, my frustrations. So that way you're playing it safe rather than going and throwing yourself into a pool that may have no water whatsoever. Next thing is you want to turn your early adopters into raving fans. I mean, at the beginning, the last thing that you want is crickets. You launch something and then you're waiting for people to come. You want to get those early adopters. You want to give those early adopters fantastic discounts, incentives to come and to maybe like tell their friends. At this point, maybe it's like influencers that have great networks. And those are great people that you can really bring to help you because those networks just get bigger, bigger, and bigger. So it makes sense for those early you know, adopters or fans to really fall in love with what you're doing and essentially turning those into raving fans that are going to spread the word around the world of what you are doing and how fantastic is your product or your service. The next thing is you need to ask yourself. I mean, it's, it's, it's really obviously raising money, but you need to ask yourself, do I want to build a billion dollar business or do I want to build a lifestyle business that is just going to be paying for my bills? If it's a billion dollar business, you're going to need to raise money. And basically, this means that you need to have the right packaging, the right positioning for the story, and also that you're really mastering storytelling. Storytelling also starts with having a pitch deck, a pitch deck that you can actually gra grab the template below, a 15 to 20 slides uh, presentation type of thing that you can showcase to investors so that they get a good idea and an understanding of what your company is about. Again, I'm mentioning that this is storytelling because at an early stage, those investors are really betting on your future. They're getting excited with the possibility and they want to jump in to build the business with you. So that's really essentially what raising money and how you go about it if you want to build a billion dollar business. Obviously, if you want to build a lifestyle business, that's completely fine. And perhaps at that point, you don't need money. But again, you need to ask yourself that question. Next, you really want to scale the business here. I mean, if it's something that is working, that you have product market fit, meaning that people love it, that it's flying off the shelves, then you need to understand how are you going to be able to expand this? How can you take it to other geographic locations? How can you get like more employees to help you and you can delegate on them? What kind of investors are you going to be bringing in? What kind of business development deals are you going to do to help really with distribution? So it's all about scaling. So I would love to hear what your business is about, what your idea is about. Leave a comment below so that I know what it is about. I'm going to review it in detail, I promise. And then also make sure that you hit the like button and to subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on all the videos that we're rolling out every week. And also don't forget to check out the fundraising training, which is the program where we help founders from A to C with everything related to fundraising, live Q&As, agreements, templates, a community of founders all over the world helping each other. And I think that you will find tremendous value in it. Thank you so much for watching.